This lesson is for section 11.1. We're going to be solving systems of linear equations. We're going to be using substitution and elimination to solve systems of equations with two variables. So all of these are going to be linear equations. And we're also going to be solving application problems like mixture problems um, and finding equations of parabolas as well. So this is a little bit of review for you guys, but this is going to go more in depth and be a little bit more difficult than what you're used to seeing from 90s. So let's review and define a system. So a system of equations is just a collection of two or more equations with the same set of unknowns. Now when you're solving a system, what you're looking for are the values for which each of your unknowns will satisfy every equation in the system. So you can have more than two unknowns and you can have more than two equations, but what you're looking for are the, the same set of unknowns that satisfies each um, equation in the system. So your systems can be linear, like our first example here, here are two lines and our solution would be where they intersect. So this is the point at which they satisfy both equations at the same time. In other words, this point over here does not satisfy both lines. It only satisfies this line here. And the point here doesn't satisfy either of those. Um, but they can also be, systems can also be nonlinear. Here we've got a quadratic intersecting with a, a linear equation here, which is why we have two different solutions because you have two different coordinates where um, they satisfy both of the equations at the same time. Now just to introduce some more vocabulary to you, um, a consistent system is one where you have a solution. So in this case we have a consistent system, you have two lines that intersect at one point, which is why you have one solution, and you would classify this as a consistent system. An inconsistent system is where you don't have any point that satisfies both simultaneously. So in this case you have a set of parallel lines here because they're never going to cross and you will have no solution. Finally you have another consistent system. Um, this one is where you have the same line graphed and it's infinitely many solutions because every single point on both lines, which is the same line, satisfies the other. So let's begin here with um, solving the system algebraically. We're going to use substitution on this first problem and elimination on the second. Now the uh, substitution problem isn't supposed to be tricky. I just wanted to show you, I'm going to solve for um, x here in the bottom equation and then plug it in. Make sure that you're looking for an easier variable to solve for. Sometimes students will pick one that I have no idea why they're picking it. They end up with a lot of fractions and then plugging in stuff that makes it very difficult on them. So just be aware of trying to eliminate, or I'm sorry, trying to um, use the easiest variable to solve for. Okay, so we plug that in. We're going to plug this in for x here. So we have 3 times 2y plus 6 minus 6y equals 12. And when I solve um, and distribute this linear equation, um, I end up getting 18 equals 12. So this is a false statement. Because it's false, this means that this is an inconsistent system. Inconsistent. I hope I spelled that right. Okay, so inconsistent means that it has no solution because these two lines here would actually be parallel. And you can actually see that too. That's not a very good set of parallel lines. But these lines would be parallel here. And you can tell because if you solve for y and you put this in a function form for both of these lines, if you are to isolate the y, you're going to see the exact same slope and different y-intercepts. So different y-intercepts would mean that these are parallel lines, um, same slope, different y-intercepts. Okay, now problem two is one that you might might not be as familiar with. Um, when we try to solve this system here, and I want to solve using elimination, I want to uh, use substitution, the idea of substitution here first, and then go ahead and, and use elimination after that. What I'm going to do in this problem is kind of rewrite this as 4 over 4 times 1 over x minus 3 times 1 over y equals 11. And um, I'm going to create a new variable, kind of like we said, like let t equal x squared. We're going to do the same thing here, except for we're going to let, and it doesn't matter if you use a and b, I'm going to use a and b just since we always use t. Let's let a equal 1 over x, and let's let b equal 1 over y. So we are going to use the idea of substitution to plug in a new value for 1 over x. So now this system becomes 4a minus 3b equals 11 and 5a minus 6b equals 9. Notice all I'm doing is plugging in that value b wherever I see 1 over y and plugging in a wherever I see 1 over x. So I end up with a really easy linear system now and to use elimination here I'm going to multiply by 5 on the top line and or actually let's do um, 
let's do, let's eliminate to get the uh, B um, there. So let's eliminate the Bs first. I'm just going to eliminate this by multiplying by a negative 2 on the top line. Now after I do that, and I eliminated the Bs here, I'm left with negative 3A equaling negative 13. So A equals negative 13 thirds, uh, negative over negative 13, so it's positive 13 thirds. Now instead of plugging A back into the original equations here, I'm actually going to do something easier because I think it's more difficult to try to plug in this, this fraction here and try to solve and distribute and everything. Um, so instead, whenever you run into a crazy fraction, because sometimes you might get these weird numbers, um, just resolve the same original system here, but this time eliminate the uh, A's. So here we eliminated B, and then we solved for A. This time I'm going to do the opposite, eliminate the A's and solve for B. So let's multiply now by 5 on the top and negative 4 on the bottom line. So now I get these two lines here. I'm going to eliminate the A's and I'm left with 9B equaling 19. When I divide I get 19 ninths. Now most students forget that what we did originally was set A equal to 1 over X and B equal to um, 1 over Y. So I'm going to use that now and substitute back in here and for that A, 1 over X. And for the B, I'll substitute in 1 over Y. And I can cross multiply here to try to solve for X and cross multiply here to solve for Y. But notice that this is just the reciprocal of, of Y. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of this as well. And I'd get the same answer whether I cross multiplied or not. But I get my coordinate to be X equals 3 thirteenths now. I'm taking the reciprocal of 13 thirds and Y equaling 9 nineteenths. So my coordinate, my solution to this system so my original system is 3 thirteenths and 9 nineteenths. So this method here is something that you should be familiar with doing. Um, you will be asked to do this on an assessment. Alright, finally, we are going to be using some applications um, and using systems to solve. So for example here, we're going to find a quadratic equation of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Notice that this does not have an a term in it. We're assuming that a is 1 here. Um, that's because if you were to be solving for a third variable here, you would need three equations um, and we'd have a system with three variables. Right now we're only focusing on linear systems with two equations and two variables. So it says determine the constants b and c so that your parabola will pass through these two coordinates here. Well remember this is just an x-y pair. Each of these is just an x-y pair. So what I'm going to do is plug in our known values for x and y into my original equation here. So I plug in negative 2, 1 into y equals x squared plus bx plus c and I end up with 1 because this is y equals x to the second power, so negative 2 squared plus b times negative 2 plus c. And then I go ahead and I simplify this and it ends up being 1 equals 4 minus 2b plus c and if I isolate um, the variables and move that constant over to the other side, I end up with negative 2b plus c equaling negative 3. Now I'm going to do the same thing and get a second equation here by plugging in the point 2, 3. When I plug the point 2, 3 in, now I have 3 because I'm substituting 3 in for this y here. So 3 equals 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. Simplifying this, I get 3 equals 4 plus 2b plus c. And if I move over this constant here, I'm in, I end up with 2b plus c equals negative 1. Now I have a system here in two equations with two unknowns, and I can solve this very easily. Um, since I already have the b's lined up to be able to eliminate that, I end up with 2c equaling negative 4. c will equal negative 2. And then if I plug that back into the original here, either line, I have 2b minus 2 equals negative 1. So 2b equals positive 1, and b will equal 1 half. Therefore, if c is equal to negative 2 and b is equal to 1 half, I have the equation for my quadratic. y equals x squared plus 1 half x minus 2. This is the parabola. Um, that passes through these two original points. Okay, last but not least, you'll be asked to do some mixture problems. The mixture problems can be an assortment of things. Sometimes they're going to be like a solution, as in you're mixing, you know, chemicals together. Um, and that's a problem here that we're going to do um, in a second. 
Other times it's going to be um, a monetary value that you're trying to sell something. Um, like in the next example, the one that you're going to try on your own is a candy problem. I'd like you guys to make sure that you can do that and you'll see this, the different types of mixture problems in, in a few different representations. But anyway, here we go. It says a pharmacist mixed some of a 30% iodine solution with some of a 40% iodine solution. How much of each solution would be needed to produce 200 milliliters of a 36% solution? Now, if you were to think of this, um, you know, in terms of real world here, you've got the, the guy mixing, this pharmacist here, mixing two different types of solution uh, into one um, bowl, I guess you can call it. Now, one solution is 30%, and we don't know how many milliliters, but let's call that X. And we don't know how many milliliters of the other solution, but we do know that it's 40%, so let's call that, that Y. And when we mix it together, X and Y are going to come together to form something that is 36% solution. Now, and I'm just doing this to help you visualize it, but basically, if you let X equal the number of milliliters of 30% solution, and Y equal the number of milliliters of 40% solution, then if we were to add those two numbers together, those two quantities, X and Y together, it would equal 200. This is the total number of milliliters he wants. Now, um, the second equation is going to introduce the fact that one solution is 30%, the other is 40%. If I mix that 30% solution here and the 40% solution here, I'm going to end up with 200 milliliters of a solution that is 36% um, iodine. So this is the two sets of equations that you're going to come up with. Um, the, the tricky part here is just understanding that you've got a total number that's going to be multiplied by the, um, in this case, the percentage of iodine. So it's going to be a very similar setup every time. So the more you practice this, the more, you know, the easier it's going to be for you. But if we want to solve this, I would suggest um, doing something pretty easy here, and that's getting rid of the decimals by multiplying throughout by 100. So let's simplify here. I have x plus y equals 200. I'm going to leave that equation alone. The bottom equation, though, um, 0.3x plus 0.40y equals, now this, if I multiply out, is going to give me 72, right? 36 times 2 is 72, and then you add two zeros to, you know, 0.72, move the decimal twice, and you get 72. Now, I want to get rid of the decimals here, so I'm going to multiply throughout by 100. To get a new equation, 3x, 30x, sorry, plus uh, 40y equals 7200. And that top equation, x plus y equals 200. Let's keep that the way it is. And now we're just going to use um, elimination here to solve. All right, now when I multiply negative 30 throughout the top equation here, I end up with this bottom equation. And if I cancel out the x's, I'm left with 10y equaling 1,200. If I divide out that 10, I end up with y equaling 120. And if I go back to my original equation here, um, I know that if y equals 120, that x must be 80. So that means that you have 80 milliliters of the 30% solution mixed with um, 120 milliliters of the 40% solution. And that is how he ends up with the 200 milliliters total of 36% iodine solution. Okay, now please go ahead and try um, Problem five, check with the key, and then come to class ready to work.